After watching this video, you will know what are the three most common project scenarios when working on the architectural visualization in Blender. You will learn how to approach these scenarios, what are the common problems, and how did I solve them for over the past 10 years to always deliver renderings to my clients. This video is part of my interior visualization course in Blender, which is available for free on my channel. You can find a complete playlist with all the videos linked in the video description below. If you want to access all of the project files and support what I do, I'll share more information on that at the end of the video. Anyway, my name is Lech and welcome to my interior visualization course in Blender. Before we jump into Blender, I would like to talk for a moment about the way I'm going to be approaching the 3D scene. So as you can see, the drawings, the architectural drawings that I'm going to be using are merged into the JPEG files and then imported to Blender. I'm also going to be using the pictures of the actual building as a references for materials and illumination. And this approach might not be exactly what you're going to face when working with the actual architectural projects, but it's going to be pretty similar anyway since you will most likely receive the architectural plans and some sketches. So instead of sketches, in our uh, example, I'm going to be using photographs. Some of you may wonder why am I approaching this kind of a project by merging the actual technical data, the CAD files, into a JPEG image. And there are a number of reasons for that. The main one is that I'm using this technique for many, many years now, and it turned out to be bulletproof in the actual projects, in the actual jobs I was doing professionally. When you're working on architectural visualizations, there will be probably two most common scenarios you're gonna face. The first one, you will just receive the DWG files from your client and you will have to do something with them in order to create the 3D model and build the entire visualization. The second scenario, you will most likely receive a 3D model from your client and you will have to create an interior or the entire scene basing on that 3D model. The third scenario is what I'm doing in my course, which is getting the architectural drawings plus some sketches and trying to create an interior scene out of them. One of the common approaches when working with the DWG files, and by the way, that stands for drawing basically. DWG is a closed file format created by Autodesk and I think it's the most commonly used file format for creating uh, technical documentation for buildings, for architectural projects. Um, and the most common approach uh, I think is converting the DWG files into DXF files, which can be then imported into Blender directly. What I find most problematic when working with DWG or DXF files is these files are a direct representation of what the architect or designer is working on at the moment, meaning the files are quite often sloppy and messy because, well, the job of an architect is not to prepare a file for a 3D artist so he has an easier job, but to create a, a drawing of his idea and present it to the client. Meaning, uh, very often if we import the files directly to Blender or to any other 3D application, um, it's not possible to receive a very clean 3D mesh out of the, the drawings directly. So as you can see in my example, the files are actually nicely made and we are able to extrude the wall layout directly from the file. But again, um, it's not that easy to create, let's say, the window openings. And as you can see, we have all of the drawings laid in a single file, meaning the building section is also here and we would have to 
separated from the entire file, rotated in order to see what's happening. In general, I think the only benefit we're getting by importing the drawing files, the DFX, DWG files directly into Blender is that we can have, we can create the wall layout quicker, uh, but it has to be done properly within the actual CAD software, which as I mentioned, is not always a case. The second scenario, which I think will be more and more common in the near future is simply receiving a 3D model of a building from your client. And the reason for that is the BIM system becoming more popular. BIM stands for Building Information Modeling and it's a documentation technique which I think it's already mandatory in the United States meaning that the buildings and the things that architects are creating are not only the flat 2D drawings as you've seen in the first example but these are the actual virtual uh, spaces and buildings created by them so what I mean by that is let's say when you draw a wall in a CAD application like ARCHICAD, for example, the system is automatically calculating the cubic meters of, let's say, a concrete needed to create those walls. Long story short, that means more and more companies will be actually able to deliver a 3D model of a building they've created in the CAD application and thus at least theoretically speeding up the process of creating the visualizations. And I'm saying theoretically because, well, the story is basically the same as with uh, 2D drawings, meaning the architects and designers are focusing mainly on creating a nice documentation for their clients and not for making a precise 3D model. So the guys like me and you uh, will have an easier job. In the end, all of that results in a 3D model, which is basically perfect when it comes to the dimensions, but very ugly when it comes to the 3D geometry quality. At least that's my experience. The reason for that is the BIM applications do not quote, think, unquote, the way we do as 3D artists and modelers. Because when creating 3D model, we very often need to uh, think of many details ahead when creating the basic shape of, let's say, a building, a wall, a ceiling, etc. And the BIM application, the main purpose of this kind of application is to simply deliver a technical papers and details to the customer. All in all, it's very often much quicker and easier to actually recreate the building from the technical drawings, the flat technical drawings, and use a 3D model as a reference, rather to fixing the 3D model itself. All of that leads us to the third approach, which I already introduced in the beginning of this video. And that approach is combining the flat 2D drawings together with the additional information and details on the building we're working on. So in our case, this will be the photographs, but in reality, this could be, well, a 3D model. Let's say you could also use as a reference. This could be a sketch, a mood board, everything basically that the designer and architect decides to provide you in order to create uh, the, the architectural visualization, the precise representation of his idea. Thank you guys for watching. In the next video, I explain different ways of working with the DWG files and how to make them work with Blender. After that, we'll finally jump into the 3D modeling process. If you want to access all of the project files used in this course, plus the complete interior scenes, plus 2000 Blender ready exclusive 3D models, then visit the Chocofor store and learn more about our subscription plans. These are the best money can buy if you really want to become better at Blender. All links are in the video description. This video is now over and I see you soon. Bye bye.